Hi, hi everybody, it's Maggie about here, the Board Game Vlog, and today is all about a couple of things I played and a couple of upcoming thingamajigs. So, this last week we ended up playing a heck of a lot of games, but the biggest, funnest one that I played was Florenza. Uh, this is the second edition that they did through Kickstarter. Um, so you are playing, trying to hire artists and make commissioned art around Florence and get the favor of the church and the captain of the guards. Um, Florenza is great and neat and different and frustrating all at the same time. Uh, you are building personal works of art and public works of art as well as building up workshops which are basically places where your workers can go to make things. So you either make marble or wood or whatever gold or whatever the green resource is or you take those same resources and you sell them or you build pieces of art. Whenever you build a piece of art you actually have to hire artists. So um, the game itself is very cool and when you put your workers down you can put them on my workshop or your workshop or whatever. If it's not your own workshop you just pay that player a point. And so points become very important as resource during the beginning of the game before you're really trying to win, win, win. You're trying to just build up your engine. The flaws in the game come from really... Uh, it's probably bad translation, not enough development. Um, everything was well left in Italian except for the rules and one turn order card. Um, luckily everything is numbered so you can see it when it's on the board but once I build a workshop and you want to know okay who else has that double white workshop again you kind of have to stare at everybody's boards to decide what you're doing because workshops you you build them in order so you start the game with a one and a two and then you can build three through eight if you like and when they actually resolve everybody's one resolves, then everybody's two resolves, and everyone's three resolves. And so if I'm using something in workshop three that I needed to earn in workshop two, it's very important the order that those go in. That didn't come up a lot in our game. We found it pretty easy to keep your resources and everything pretty straight. But it did come up. It came up when um, you need to build a uh, piece of art or whatever it is. So it came up as uh, you were trying to build out specific pieces of art or sell for cash that you needed to pay the artists. Um, so there was a lot of looking around the board and double checking and making sure people have what you think they have and when you're going to get it and when they're going to get theirs. And the midway point through the game where people started getting frustrated with it was that uh, there's a deck of cards that the artists uh, as they come out so there's three different types of art there's a uh, sculpture and painting and uh, something else and each piece of art requires a number of those types of artists so if I'm if I'm trying to build this one and it has a green artist but no green artists are available I'm just out of luck and um, so it kind of became a pilot mechanic once all of our engines worked and we were ready to make lots of art. Uh, we got kind of screwed over based on how what artists we could get access to. Um, the people I was playing with likened it to Craftsman, where you have a production step that's really important. But I don't think it's quite as dire as Craftsman. There's still plenty of other things to do. It's just that you do need the artists. So there's going to be a point in the game where everyone flips from trying to build the engine to trying to use the engine for uh, lots of lots of art because you lose a lot of points by not building and uh, you get a significant amount of points for building. Oh, so that's Florenza. I'm excited. I'm going to try it again this week and I will probably have some more insights on that. But it's a good two, three hour game so it's not something that's going to come out all of the time. Um, then we played a two player game of DR Congo uh, DR Congo is not a two-player game. It's a four-player game. You have this big old map, and each turn you're going to find out where the insurgents are coming from in the Congo. So they might come come at you in your diamond mine. They might come at you at the north end or whatever. But in a two-player game, we very early realized that 
unless we can get a shipping route to one of the ports, so you either have like a full price port or you have the two ports that you get kind of a lesser price for, unless both of us have access to a port, we're gonna we're just gonna flail around for a while because the insurgents are gonna, are so important. They shut down so many things that there's just no way to get by them. So in our two-player game, we ended up having to build a shipping route all the way across the board together, and that meant that it turned into almost a co-op, which is not a bad thing. I think the game is not trying to dissuade you from working with other people, but with more players, it's not going to be quite as hand-holdy. Um, with four players, you're going to have more of the map filled, you're going to have more control, you're going to be able to decide if building the lesser lesser price routes, if they're faster, is better than getting all the way through to the other port. Um, enjoyed it. Thought the insert was ridiculous, so if you haven't seen it already, I put up a little video of uh, me trying to fit all the bits into the insert. It doesn't happen. I literally had to throw the insert away, which is not normal for me. I usually try and keep everything together, but it was kind of silly. We punched everything out of the boards, and then as soon as you went to put the game away, I realized, oh no, it's vacuum pack plastic nonsense. You can't even flip it over because the board won't fit in if you flip it upside down. So that's that's what that was. Um, we also played our first game of Lagrangia. So these are all just first impressions, nothing too serious. Lagrangia was great, and I will talk about it more once I've played it some more because I have questions and doubts and all kinds of things. So... We're going to leave that for another time. But coming right up, it is uh, July 29th right now. I am going to try and make up for my failure in November of last year. So uh, starting August 1st, it's vlogist. So I'm going to try and do a vlog every day. Um, you guys can follow me as I go to my first Dragon Flight, which is a North Pacific Northwest con. Uh, the next weekend after that, I will have Sasquatch Game Weekend, so it's a small, free weekend gaming thing, and it's not a lot of people, but it should be pretty intense and fun. Uh, the following weekend is Vlogger Fair, and my friend Nicholas is uh, visiting Seattle, and the weekend after that is PAX. So, there will be a ton of cool things happening and lots of cool games, so that should be a really nice time. Um, in that vlogist, I hope to not only revamp, but just uh, I'm going to at least make a top 10 video. If it's just one video or if it was 10 videos, that would be all fine. But I started a top 10 of all time last year during Novlomo. And because of health and work, I never got to finish it. So uh, we will have a top ten. It might just be one video, and I'll just do my entire top ten. Um, because it sucks to have your failures so public. But, you know, it, it had to happen. I, I wasn't in a good place. So uh, you got to pick what's important in life, you know. Uh, and then for this weekend, it's Jen Kant, so you'll be seeing plenty of photos. If you don't follow me already, follow me on Twitter or Facebook. It's at MaggieBot. Uh, I am looking to get these six games on the table. Lagrange, Florenza, Duck Dealer, which is an old splatter game where you kind of, as a whole group, you have 25 actions in the game, and you're trying to make goods and sell them, and they're rubber duckies and all kinds of fun things, and you're trying to sell painted blue duckies. Um, so, that one. Fresh Fish, Nuremberg, which I had a hell of a time getting into the States, and then I've never played it, and it's been since last Essen, so it's not quite a year, but close. And DR Congo, I would like to get another play of that. So, those are my goals for the weekend. Um, I have gaming scheduled from tonight through Sunday. So we should have something going on. And I will continue to try and update these vlogs. And I have no words today, so I hope this wasn't too boring. Um, <laughs> I will see you guys later. I have to go try and figure out the Blender segment this week is about conflict resolution. And I'm looking around my gaming collection to try and like you know, get inspiration. And I'm like, you know what? The conflict resolution in my games aren't really like... It might be a stretch for me, is what I'm saying. Uh, it might have to go... I don't know. Maybe I'll talk about Intrigue. Did you guys ever play Intrigue? Um, 
it's unfortunately broken with the wrong players, but a really interesting negotiation game that doesn't have much more to it than just negotiation. Uh, so we'll see how conflict res resolution happens, but uh, it was good to talk to you all, and I will see you very, very soon. Bye!